more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. I right, top billing. Much love to everyone out there who showered your boy with the overwhelming amount of support on that bench Gino video from a few days ago, man. I'm talking cats coming out the woodwork. Quality support on deck like you wouldn't believe. Uh, you had people contacting me through various mediums, right? Off the channel, right? Which you know I love, right? But I'll make an exception on this. We had people contacting me telling, him, telling me how much they love uh, my coverage and, and what wouldn't want to see me go away from the Seahawks coverage and all that, man. I'm talking about something that came up out of that was the vocal minority versus the silent majority, right? Not something I ever thought of right there. And to me, it still doesn't make much sense because think about this, right? How would you let somebody sit around and represent you? And if you think that they don't represent the majority of your fan base. So all those people coming out and much love to all the people who said they never commented before, but they had to comment now and, and show that love and support there, man. I mean, it went on and on and on and on and on. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy, man. So we'll continue to trek in this manner because people were telling me how much they love, how I put my foot on people's necks and I don't take shit and I talk that shit, walk that shit and all that. And uh, that's what we'll continue to do here. At least that's what I'll continue to do for sure. So uh, once again, man, much love to everybody out there. Big salute to everyone, right? But here's something that you guys need to see right here. So I'm sitting here reading my favorite publication, right? NJ.com, to which I am a subscriber to out here in Jersey. And I saw the title, Giants had a franchise QB, not Daniel Jones, but didn't give him a fair shake, host says. I'm like, what? Who's this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Geno Smith, according to one Boomer Esiason, the New York Giants messed up by not extending or extending a courtesy to someone like Geno Smith and having him be the guy who takes over after one Eli Manning. Can you believe that? Boomer said they had their guy and they let him go. They had Geno Smith. They had him. The Jets had him. Well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> right? The New Jersey Jets had him when he was younger and he got punched in the face. I don't know what that means. Why well, you got to bring that up? When Geno was here for the Giants, he was unfortunately the guy that was taking over for Eli Manning in the sacred ground he stood on. It was impossible for him to get a fair shake. They saw him in practice and loved what he was doing. Come on, man. Later goes on to say he resurrected his career under Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks, showing flashes during four games in 2021 and becoming a full time starter in 2022 when he completed 69.8% of his passes, 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions to earn his first Pro Bowl nod, a real Pro Bowl nod, not one of them fake ass alternate ones, and comeback player of the year. What? Besides, and said, sitting there for a couple of years in Seattle behind a very unpopular starting quarterback in Russell Wilson, right? The artist formerly known as. It all came into play for him. He figured it out. Meanwhile, the Giants won and fired Sean Jones to a four year, 160 million extension. He's 884 yards, two touchdowns, six interceptions, blah, 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 blah. So if Boomer Sizen can see it, the fuck is you talking about, hater man? I don't want to double back to what I was talking about as far as the prejudice aspect of this, right? The only people who didn't get it were people who I know for a fact are legit racist, right? Those are the only people who have problem with people broaching topics that involve race. They'll automatically label someone a racist, right? And they only mention race, right? You're not allowed to mention, if you're a minority, you're not even allowed to mention race because racists will ding you racist. Shit makes zero sense, right? Like, I'm a grown-ass man. I've been living on this earth for a long time. I understand shit. That's just the bottom line. I've been through a whole bunch of shit, and I can tell you this. It doesn't even have to deal with racism, right? It's more of a prejudice. There's definitely racism involved, in, but it's a prejudice. When you're a minority in a leadership position, you have to go above and beyond the call of duty. You have to surpass expectations and do not have a previous reputation of not doing well because people will hold that against you to whereas that's not always the case uh, with other races. So 
look at this right here. I wanted to show you something. Josh Allen is universally loved. He's a great player. He has a great skill set, fun to watch, and everything, right? Just over the time that Geno Smith has been the starter in Seattle, comparing him to Josh Allen right here, look at this, right? And this is the Geno Smith guy right there that the pocket of fans want replaced, right? Oh, you can say it's the the vocal minority or whatever like that. Those people still exist. Those people still showed up on that very video saying the goofy shit, right? You even had a lot of people coming up. One dude come up on there talking about some, oh, we like Geno Smith, Cletus. Uh, he dresses conservatively, you know, like, like that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. You have to fit a certain mold. And people comparing him to the artist formerly known as, stop it. Come on. That man right there is the corniest dude in the history of sports. You cannot compare Geno Smith to a cornball like that. That guy is not threatening. He's exactly the type of guy that someone who is racist or prejudiced could definitely go with, right? Because he's not threatening. He's not the guy you're walking down the street you're going to put your purse to the front for. It won't happen with Russell Wilson. So think about that here. But look at this comparison. Josh Allen... In the, in the same amount of time, they both played 22 games right here. In 772 attempts uh, versus 736 attempts, Geno Smith completes 69% of his passes. Josh Allen completes 65% of his passes. Now, remember, this is roughly uh, just shy of 40 more attempts from Josh Allen. He has... Uh, we'll just say 400 more yards right there than Geno Smith, right? Which is what, a game and a half worth, which would be probably what 40 attempts is for a guy like Geno Smith, right? 48 touchdowns, 20 interceptions, right? A two-to-one ratio, of it, well, pretty good, right? Very good. Geno Smith, 35 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, right? <laughs> he has a less a, a less interception rate, 1.9 to 2.6. Josh Allen has 6.2 touchdown percentage to 4.8 i've watched the bills they don't run the ball as well they're not they're a pass first team seattle is a run first team so a lot of the cheap touchdowns that a guy like josh allen gets or even a patrick mahomes who plays for another passing team they'll be by the goal line it'll be a two yard touchdown pass something very easy right they stat those guys up like that you you know what i mean Geno Smith, when they're down there, I counted several times just in this last game where people said Geno sucked. They could have easily thrown a one or two yard touchdown pass, but they would rather run it in with uh, Kenneth Walker, which is their core philosophy. Geno Smith doesn't care. He just wants to win. How do you not like a guy like that, right? Look at this. Look at the rating. Geno Smith has a higher uh, higher quarterback rating than Josh Allen over the similar over a similar time period, right? Or the last 22 games. He's been sacked more, but people say, oh, he's holding a ball longer and all this, that. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> we can get to that there maybe at another time. I'll go through some, some throws there, right? But let's just say he is. Uh, he's a lot more careful with the ball, which is Seattle's core philosophy. Buffalo Bills, more of a high-risk team. That's what they do. That's why Josh Allen will throw a little bit more interceptions, right? Or it would appear that he has a little bit of a higher interception. Well, it's not appear. He does have a little bit more of a higher interception rate. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. If you knew that your guy is playing as good as Josh Allen, right, the results don't always boil down to just the damn quarterback. Learn, learn football. Come on, man. You can't blame the quarterback every time you lose. That's some, I won't even say that's some, you know, I, mean, I ain't going to go there, right? That's some casual fan shit. It's not always the quarterback's fault. One hand washes the other, both wash their face. If you're not looking at the line of scrimmage first and foremost, you're doing yourself a disservice. If the offensive line is not up to snuff, right, obviously there's quarterbacks who can get you in and out of that, and Geno is one of them. He escaped tons of pressure over this entire season, right? I talked about that shit during the Detroit Lions game where people were trying to say the replacements were playing good and all this and that. And look at that win right there. People want to talk about the loss to the Bengals, a damn team that I honestly think is just a better team than Seattle. That's just my opinion there. The results are in the pudding, right? They were in the Super Bowl two years ago. They still advanced in the playoffs last year too, right? And they play in a super tough division as well. Or maybe even a little tougher division or just as tough, right? So, like... That Detroit Lions win was a walk-off touchdown for Geno Smith. But coming out of that, a lot of the people talked about the blunder that he made where it went to overtime. That's the type of shit that I'm talking about, having to go above and beyond the call of duty. 
He let his team down that damn field in overtime with a walk-off TD on a team that's now 5-1. and one. I was told that that win wasn't nothing from the haters because Detroit sucks. They don't suck, my man. Detroit is damn good. Just like I said they would be, I said Detroit and Seattle were each other's equal. They are the same type of team with the same type of situation with the same quarterback uh and with the same kind of style and all that shit like that, straight up. It was just going to be about who can get it together on defense, and both teams have got it together on defense. But Seattle beat Detroit straight up in Detroit. Nobody wants to give Geno Smith any credit for that, but you would give him the blame, the entire blame for the Cincinnati game, but he gets zero credit credit for the Detroit Lions game. Think about that. Now let's go over a couple of scenarios right here. This post corner, right? I want to go by some of the things that people were mentioning on that video right here. So you get DK Metcalf right here. Look like he's going to shoot it to the post, run it to the corner right here. Cam Taylor Britt was on his ass like a pit bull, right? The entire game. No doubt about that. He was shadowing him. Much love to Cam Taylor Britt. I got to do something on him one day. No doubt about that right here. So people just want Geno to throw it up. He's risk averse, right? Being risk averse does not mean you're not going to throw an interception ever. <laughs> that means more times than not, you're going to try to put your team in the best possible scenario back to the basket play action fake uh no why i don't see why you would throw that all right can't tell the is right there maybe you could say all right it's dk metcalf just throw it up well he's done that several times and dk metcalf didn't come down with it or D or it gets knocked out or whatever like that as long as the other person doesn't come right he dumps the ball down to charbonnet there better than nothing comes back the next play right the very next play right he still goes vert he could have threw that shit to DK Metcalf and got intercepted, but nah. The next play, holds the safety middle field close right there and jocko a locket launcher to your boy Tyler Lockett. Just because he didn't go all or nothing with it, right? Maybe the previous quarterback did. That's his style of play. That's not Geno Smith's style of play, and Geno Smith's style of play fits Pete Carroll's core philosophy better than the previous quarterback although the previous quarterback is probably more talented right but geno smith fits this one uh better right if they get to me get a lot further on offense with geno smith hell didn't he break like team records last year or something like that right i don't know the ins and outs of that or whatever but i remember them always saying that he broke several team records last year that doesn't count for anything Right? There's a core philosophy that coaches go by, and Geno Smith fits that. It's just that people continue to hold on what Geno Smith did previously in New York, right? No, New York. <laughs> it wasn't in New York. He was doing it here in Jersey for the New York Jets there, and they can't let that go. So you already have that preconceived notion there. No matter what you do, you're on a damn near throw-by-throw -throw basis with people because they don't like you in the first place. All right, now this particular play had a lot of people <laughs> giving up on Geno Smith, which is crazy to me. All right, absolutely crazy to me. Is this a bad play? Now that I get to see the all 22 version of it, it is a bad play. No doubt about that. He could have put that up there. He ends up throwing away, right? And they didn't know loss or anything like that. He's up throwing it away right there. Something he didn't like about that particular play right there. And he gets rid of the ball. So. No harm, no foul there. Yes, this, I definitely think, all right, we'll just come from this right here, right? Back to the basket, play action fade, got a pistol weak here. Bang. You maybe hit the, hit the drop right here. I'd say go ahead and shoot it now to the corner. He's already got the step on the leverage. You got the safety hell right pretty much by the stitches here. Obviously, he's going to be reacting now and getting over there. But you could think maybe the ball would travel faster than the man. I don't know if he think he had to put some air under this and possibly the guy could the the safety could get over there. But you know what I'm saying? At least give it a shot. So no doubt about that. That is a bad play. I've never once said that some of these plays weren't his fault. My thing is, why are we going play by play? Why are people counting how many reads he missed as if he's the only quarterback in the world who would miss a read in the game? Patrick Mahomes has six. Patrick Mahomes has six interceptions this season. Uh, Josh Allen has five interceptions this season, right? Shit happens. I'm not saying that Geno is those guys. My point is those guys are great, and even they mess up. So why does he have to be absolutely perfect? It goes back to what I said before. 
When you're a minority, you have to go above and beyond the call of duty. Right? You have to you have these extravagant standards that you have to meet and exceed. <laughs> you can't even meet them. You have to exceed these standards there because think about it. This guy was comeback player of the year. He had those stats that I said that were as good as Josh Allen's. And you have people, right, already was trying to replace him even before this season. Coming off of that, people were already talking about replacing him with a rookie quarterback or something like that. You have to meet and exceed those. So then if you get that right, they can't shake what you were previously. Then you're on a throw-by-throw basis. Look at this one right here. Now, this is definitely one, right? This was the next play. I'm not sure where you go with this because you want to put it beyond the sticks there. You want to put it beyond the sticks. Uh, these guys are playing football too. You have underneath coverage there. So if you think about going right here to lock it, you have somebody seeking underneath. You got that over under coverage there. Uh, where exactly you're going to put this at? And then, of course, you're going to have a breach. People did not talk about the, how poor the offensive line has played. The penalties. Man, the amount of penalties I've noticed, the pre-snap penalties and holding calls and all that like that, nobody's mentioning that stuff. There's damn near a breach on every play that Geno drops back on right here. Um, you can say what? Maybe try to lead him there? <laughs> maybe. If this guy's in good position right there. He probably could run that down there. But if you just say just to throw it up, yeah, he's going to be probably a little bit more risk averse there. Then by the time he was even going to throw it, look at him. He had to pull some Houdini shit out again because if he was going to throw it in that direction, there was a breach. And then he had to evacuate, right? He needed an exit plan, and he left with exit wounds. Not trying to absolve him of wrongdoings or anything like that. Just pointing out how uneven a lot of the criticism is. Now, I need you to look at this. People talking about Gino holding the ball too long, right? Come on, man. You guys learn a, You guys will learn a term and then overuse it or use it in the wrong context or something. It doesn't even make sense. Is this holding the ball too long? You have coverage across the board. You have to make it past the sticks. These routes have to develop. Now, look, are these routes developed all the way right here? Where are you going to go with this, with this underneath coverage, right? Before you get sacked. <laughs> before you get sacked, before the dam breaks, because your offensive line is struggling with a really good Cincinnati Bengals defensive front right here. But look at this. A man right here takes under over under coverage, right? So he's going to be in vertical bell here. You get... Oh, we'll see, we can diagram this out right here. You get Lockett right here. I believe that's Lockett right here, kind of running a, a corner route. You get, uh, I want to say, Kobe Parkinson right here. He's getting an out route. He's got both of these defended by his, just from his mental presence damn near, right? He can shoot it back here easily. When he's sinking back, he can definitely stick his foot in the ground right here and tackle Kobe Parkinson, who would be short of the sticks anyway. So if you're going right there, there's really nowhere to go with the ball. People will see a guy and be like, oh, he's open. Uh, like it's Madden or something like that. Shit don't work that way, homie. That's why, you know what I mean? Too many people talking about football who never put on pads that didn't say extreme exorbitant on it. Like, what are we doing? Check this out right here. Where are you going to go with this? And then by the time you can't go somewhere, you're getting sacked. Is that holding on to the ball too long? Look at that. One, two, three. Oh, done. Done. Nobody wants to point that out, though, right? It's just a blame Geno thing right here, right? Interior portion of the Haynes guy and all these, and Bradford. Curhan, Curhan over there struggling. Charles Cross was struggling as well in his time, first time back there. But look, you can count one, two, three. If you're trying to go through a progression right there, what are you going to do? He's not holding on the ball too long. He's making sure he doesn't turn that bitch over. If anything, they're just throwing the ball just to throw it. Come on, man. All right, now check this interception out by Geno Smith that had everybody mad, right? You see Geno right here. He's on the pool, right? Tries to hold a safety, and then he underthrows and look at his interception. Oh, wait, look. That's not actually Geno Smith. That's Joe Burrow, who at sometimes looks like the best quarterback in the league. He threw an interception on a back shoulder fade route, right? Or at least he wanted to throw it as a back shoulder fade. Didn't work out well, right? Trey Brown in great position on Jamar Chase right there. Turns inward and uses the sideline as his friend, that was a hell of a play, right? So I should be talking about stuff like this. That's why I try to tell people. I would rather cover teams that don't have QB issues because talking about 
eat at Geno's overshadows the great defensive performance that Seattle turned in against a damn good offensive outfit, one of the top three offenses in the league, in my opinion, and uh, they held up in that measure. It was the lone interception that Geno Smith threw that was his fault, right? And it's not like this was a bad decision. This was a bad throw. I can live with bad throws over bad decisions because, hey, you throw it again, you be like, you know what, let me put a little bit more air under that, right? You get Jackson Smith and Jigba here uh, coming in short motion and then kinetically making it out here to this back shoulder face. Some dumbass was in the comment section talking about Geno Smith threw it in the double coverage and all that. Like These people don't even know what the hell they talking about. Look at this. Short motion. Kinetic right here. He launched that bad boy and oh, he didn't put enough air under it, right? And Jackson Smith and Jig was just continuing to run. To me, if you on someone like this, you would have to have a DK Metcalf out here, but I actually think Jake Bobo would have been the guy to run this type of play. He'd probably sit there and adjust to the ball in the air and end up mossing the cornerback. So sometimes they run plays with certain players, and I'm like, what? Why are you running a screen with Tyler Lockett, a.k.a. Courage, right? Do that shit with Jackson Smith and Jig, but he's a run after the catch guy. So is Jake Bobo and these guys. But on shit like this, the way you want to have a fade, why not go to your tall six foot four receiver, uh, Jake Bobo, or or your boy DK Metcalf, or Kobe Parkinson, or somebody like that, right? I don't know. But obviously, it was a bad throw by Geno regardless, but one that you can live with. But people were going hammer time on it. Obviously, it was in the red zone. But guess what? You know why they were far that far back? Geno had them down there at the one-yard line, right? It was because of a penalty. It was two penalties, actually, right? A false start or something like that. Um, and then, like, a holding penalty as well. So, the entire team, in my opinion, on offense had his moments there. DK Metcalf was inconsistent in this game, stopping his routes, uh, getting beat by Cam Taylor Britt on plays where he should have squeezed the ball and had it there. The offensive line there, the running game, nobody even talking about that. The running game wasn't really alive in this one, and that's Seattle's thing right there. So how is it all on Geno? But like I said before, we know why it's all on Geno, and I understand it's the silent majority right of people who aren't talking and then you have the vocal minority of people who make their presence felt after every loss nowhere to be found in after that detroit game or some of those games last year where the people said that he couldn't throw the deep ball he did that and they said that uh, he wasn't clutch uh, several game winning drives there from the man right there and here you have it but it is what it is man so I continue to put my foot on these people's necks, and I don't give a damn what anybody says out there. So it is what it is. You think you're going to come here and I care about your little weak-ass, shallow mindset, right? You don't. You haven't lived the life. You don't live out here. You ain't live around the shit that I've been around and understand this kind of stuff that I understand. So I'm not, I don't give a damn what you say. So it'll always be like that. I march to the beat of my own drum. I'm my own man, all right? Your boy Jersey Murph, though, as always, like I said before, much love to everybody out there who was showing mad love to your boy. Um, much love to you guys, no doubt about that, right? I got to give you guys a lot more credit on these type of videos and then worry about the haters, all right? That being said, man, salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.